Okay, so we've got a JBL 300 series. This one's a 315 and it's got, it's dead. And this is just a quick video to show you how to disassemble and uh, remove the amplifier for service, okay? So there's a view of the rear panel. You can see it's a 315 and it's part of the JBL 300 series, okay? So this is how to remove the uh, internal electronics and what to send off for repair to the repair centre if you need to send it. Okay, so what we need to do is just lay the speaker onto its back and what you're going to need is to remove, or need to do, is to remove these screws along the bezel, okay? That holds the whole thing together. Now those screws, they can be quite tight in the plastic. Don't use an Allen key, uh, you need a Torx driver, T10. So there's the screws, all of them being removed, put them in a safe place for when you need to put them back together because we don't have any spares. Okay. All the screws are now being removed around the bezel, so this will come off. So if you stand the speaker up, like so, and gently just pull on the front, she'll come open. And then you can walk the speaker away from the enclosure. And looking inside, you can see there are there's a, a wire here connecting these cables to the amplifier and two wires at the base down here in the base which power the front indicator the JBL icon on the front of the, of the speaker okay so what we're going to do is just pull these off noting the right one goes on the right side looking from the back obviously you've got to put it back there so anyway so we removed the <coughs> the indicator uh, drive for the front panel and we have a screw here holding these this cable loom assembly into position it's best not to remove from from the speakers and the drive units it's best just to remove this screw from the top Save the screw onto the cable secure lug and unplug the speaker. All right. So now the front part will come away from the back part. So we'll just move that away. Okay. So the speaker is now lying on its back. Then you see we removed the drive units and the front panel. Uh, there's a two rubber feet here which go back in. So don't lose those. We have to go back in. And this protective damping felt I suppose you'd call it. I'm not sure what it's used for or why it's there but it's in there and it's usually tucked into the base like that. Okay so remember to put that back. So now as you recall we're going to remove the amplifier and the mixer power board. All right. So the first thing to do is unplug the amplifier cable which is just pull that plug out there and remove the sticky tape. All right. Note that when this goes back together there is a protective um, braid stopping the ribbon cable from chafing on the sharp metal edge of this can here. So there's a protective braid like a sleeving braid and there's one down here it's pretty untidy and it's tucked in under there to stop the vibrations eating through or wearing through the actual power wires. Note that you've got a mains uh, earth connection, the safety earth connection on the corner of this heat sink and make sure you put that safety earth back on otherwise the whole thing will be floating. All right. So without further ado let's re remove the units. Okay so this 315 as far as I know has never been opened before and um, when I've taken this apart, I've taken a lot of these apart, this piece of felt stroke absorbing material, any suggestions of what it's for, we don't know, it's always in different places, sometimes it's just dumped in the back of the speaker, on this one look they've poked a hole in it down here, there's a hole poked in it and the clip for the cable is also holding it down, so I don't know, make your own mind up, but it does go back in and I have run them without because some customers have lost them. Uh, this part I'm talking about here and um, it's been fine so I don't know make your own mind up but on this one that's how it is so I would put it back like that sort of squish down the bottom half with a the thing there just holding it so you can put it together and then the cables are out of the way okay so if I just pull that off and remove it 
you can see what's inside. <coughs> We've got this silicon stuff sealing the mains wiring, and I think that's due to um, you know with the different air pressure with the with the speaker going back and forth. I'm guessing you'll get some sort of vibration, or it may be to stop chafing. Who knows? You've got the umbilical cable which carries power back to the mixer board and the differential audio signals for the um, for the bass driver and the uh, treble driver. So two different differential audio channels. There's always a piece of tape on there holding this cable on top. Um, you may want to consider just putting a blob of silicon or something to hold that connector in because I, I've had customers who put them back together, it's worked for a while and then this, this connector has come out. It doesn't normally work loose but what can you say, it's, um, it comes out fairly easily, look, you just pull it and if it's not put in properly when you put it back then you've got a problem there. So then you've got the mains wiring coming out, it's secured down here by a clip to the casing and then goes on three separate wires, all different lengths. Look, they can bother to trim them to the same length. Note the earth wire that goes on here. Right on that corner of the aluminium, there's a, an earth wire. It must be fitted, okay? Got to fit that, otherwise you could have an issue with... Um, if there's a short on this and a power supply breaks down, you could end up with... Instead of blowing the fuse or tripping out your residual current circuit breaker, it could actually present live wires onto the back of the unit so make sure that earth is good and that the wire is good. They use these bloody awful crimps, these things, uh, which don't have stress relief for the sleeving. Anybody that's making serious equipment, uh, for example an aircraft or safety critical would never consider just crimping onto the conductor itself. You would have some extended um, support for the, uh, for the insulation. Okay. So now this piece of um, fibrous kind of braided sleeving, can you see that? That is there to stop these mains wires here, the, the red and the blue, chafing on the edge of this tin. This tin is a pressed uh, cut and folded tin and it's got very sharp edges under there. So rather than put a return on the edge, they've just stuffed this. It's an ugly, ugly situation, but that's what they do. They shove it in then trap it underneath here so make sure you do that and that goes back on okay otherwise the vibration from the speakers may chafe these wires and then you end up with a fuse blowing situation or a trip blowing out and likewise with the umbilical audio stroke power cable you've got the, the same piece of sleeving in there to prevent that chafing underneath the edge of there so make sure that goes back in position um, also got what looks like silicon has been applied down the sides of this tin okay see that be interesting to see the serial number of this speaker because I've never seen that before on a unit and down the side of that tin as well has got silicone on it very strange maybe they just had a special get rid of the silicone week in the factory who knows so to take this apart what we've got to do we've got to um, base you can see these screws here there's three screws here, screw there, screw there and a screw there okay so six screws that hold this piece in and then around the periphery of the mixing unit you've got one, two, three, four, five, six, seven screws right to come out so I'm just going to take those out, I'm not going to bore you on the video taking those out and I'll show you what it reveals underneath Right, so this is what the customers normally send in to me when um, I'm going to repair one of these things. We've got basically the complete assembly of some, the screws being put back in there for safekeeping. Um, and then, so we have the input stroke mixer stroke power socket uh, module, because that needs to be checked, and the parameters of that needs to be checked properly. Otherwise, there could be a problem there. They don't normally fail, but there can be problems. So let's check the whole system. And then the amplifier module itself, see... It's, sometimes this tin is loose, if it is loose because it hasn't got this silicon, this one's got silicon down there, can you see that? Um, they don't often have that silicon, I've never seen it I don't think, um, so um, yeah, if the lid is loose then tape it on or put some tape around it, okay, but put some plastic under first because I don't like peeling tape off and I like to send them back in a good condition when I fix them. So um, yeah, so if you want to send me one to have a look at, and we're trying to get a repository of all the different repair and failing modes on these for the training database, then uh, yeah, please do. But that's the two parts that need to be taken out for an engineer to have a look at. Right, this one's got some corrosion on the screws. Can you see there? It looks like it's been in a damp environment at some point. The blacking on the screws has corroded. 
which would suggest that it's been somewhere a little bit where there's been some condensation at some point. So yeah, just to recap on that, actually, you might be interested in this. You've got the power light, which is usually blue. You've got your gain setting for micro line, and then you've got the signal uh, light and the limit light. The limit is just an overdriving light. It doesn't mean to say there's a power. There's no feedback from the amplifier. And if you hit this with a big input of huge bass drop um, or completely overdrive, this won't save you. The, the speed will still cut out and come back on as it overloads the power supply. Uh, there's no sort of dynamic limitation of the uh, input signal that I can find. I've had customers say, oh, the speaker keeps cutting out, and I've tested it here, and it's been fine up to the power limit, but as soon as you breach the power limit, the power supply folds, and, yeah, it, it goes off and comes back. So there's a little bit of, uh, it's a bit like a rev limiter on a car. It cuts out, and then the engine comes back. It's the same with these speakers, all right? But generally, they're pretty good, actually. Yeah, so that's that. So if you like the video, then subscribe in that button down there and when the reassembly video comes back on or any other technical information about the 315s up if you've got 315s just subscribe and you'll see any other useful stuff that comes along I can't fix all the 315s all over the world I don't like the idea of them going to landfill so I'm going to provide the information for anyone else that wants to have a go I'm happy to do them but you know if you guys out there and wherever you are please um, use the videos as you wish to to get this uh, get them sorted and get them back out there